I live in an apartment which was built in 1989. Let me just go over the layout of the apartment because it's important. It's a pretty standard place, but it has a loft. It's not that big to be honest, it's a little cramped in there. I don't really like my loft. I find it kind of, I don't know, creepy. There's a certain sense of vulnerability that comes with having a loft. I can't quite explain it, but by the end of this story, you'll know why they frightened me. It all started with a feeling one night after work. I haven't been able to shift this feeling. As soon as I come through the door, the first thing I see as I enter my apartment is my loft. I get the feeling that sometimes something is watching me from up there. At first, I just thought that it was my tired mind conjuring up something. I've been tired before, you know. This felt different. Little did I know, a grudge was born that day. Let me give you a POV. When you're in the bed in the loft, if you naturally look out or down, you'd see the entryway leading to the kitchen. Now naturally, when I sleep, I sleep on my side and therefore I face the entryway to the kitchen. Sometimes before sleep comes for me, I get the strong feeling that someone is looking up at me, staring at me from down there in the entryway. In uneasy times like that, I try to read or get myself to sleep as soon as possible. I hit the lights so I don't get distracted. I just use a little nightlight near my pillow to read my book. However, one night a deeper sense of unease crept over me. I felt as if something was wrong. I heard a noise coming from down below. The lights were off down there. I listened carefully. It sounded as if someone was exhaling. It definitely sounded like breathing. The second my mind understood that I was hearing breathing, I stayed deathly still. I was horrified. My heart began to thunder in my chest. I thought that there was an intruder in my home. The air in the room felt heavy and oppressive. It enveloped me. It was all around me. The room seemed to grow darker. I felt strange. I could still hear that noise. It resounded around the room below. It sounded closer. Beneath the loft there was a blind spot. I felt as if I pinpointed the spot where that breathing sound was coming from. Someone was down there. With their back against the wall, I managed to convince myself of that. When I imagined that, I shuddered. I drew my shoulders up to my chin and I held my covers tight. It was like a stalemate. I couldn't do anything and the feeling that there was someone down there wouldn't go away. After a moment or two, the breathing sound suddenly stopped. I thought that it was all over, that I imagined the whole thing and relief washed over me. Then, in that moment, I heard a familiar sound, a sound that I had heard many times before. It was the instantly recognizable sound of someone climbing the ladder which leads to the loft. It sounded exactly like someone climbing up towards me on that ladder. I was frozen with fear. Again, I was unable to move. My mind was a mess of fear and worry as I heard the sound of someone climbing up. Clarity came to me though swiftly. I guess this is what they call fight or flight. I made my mind up to deal with whoever was coming up. The sound continued. I was certain that I would see someone's head emerge in a matter of seconds. Those seconds came and went, although they felt as if they were hours. The tension was unbearable. Nothing came into view, and then the sound stopped. It stopped at the top of the ladder. If someone was on that ladder, I should have seen them. It sounded like whatever came up that ladder was now in the loft with me. I didn't know what the hell was going on. I was sure that there was an intruder in the house, and as soon as that thought crossed my mind, my nightlight went out and I was plunged into absolute darkness. Then, close to my ear, I heard three words which chilled me to the core. Who are you? I cannot remember much after that point. I guess I fainted or something. It was morning when I opened my eyes again. I don't know why, but I don't really feel the need to pursue or search for the meaning or an explanation to this experience. I'm debating whether or not to move out. I feel like it could be just the beginning of something. There's definitely something bad in my apartment. I don't think I'll be able to stand it 
if something like that happens again. This happened seven years ago, when I was a student. I contracted an apartment and I lived in peace for about half a year, but due to an error with the real estate agent, I had to move out. Basically, they double contracted the apartment and I had to go to court and I was given a time period and forced to move out. The realtor came over with sweets and his apologies and told me that he is searching for a new place for me to live and he promised to have it all wrapped up before the time period to move out was up. Due to either incredibly bad luck or bad timing, my realtor was unable to find me a place, and the deadline the court set passed. The realtor was getting pretty frustrated and flustered with the situation, I could tell. At late notice, I was shown a rental property, which was out of my price range, but the realtor said, I'll find you a new place to live. I just need a month, and I'd like it if you could live here, just temporarily. The place looked pretty old. I'd say it was built about 20 or 30 years ago. It was very spacious, though. I had two big bedrooms, a bathroom, with a separate toilet. Things seemed too good to be true, so I suspected that it was a home with a history. You know, a Jiko Buken, an accident property, whatever. I asked the realtor about the history of the place and why it had remained on the market for so long. Uh, the, the area is not the best, sorry about that. It, it's not a good idea to be out and about at night around here, so please keep that in mind. I wondered if there was some organized crime around here, you know, like the Yakuza. I thought that I could stand it for a month. If things got too bad, I could always crash at my friend's place. As soon as I moved in, I realized that there were no gangs in the area, and it wasn't dangerous at all at night. I did have numerous experiences in there though, and I'll list them for you now. When I first moved in, I noticed that there were people living on other floors of the building, but no one on my floor. When I got off of the elevator, I heard a cat mew. It sounded like it was coming from the little area in the hallway which holds the fire extinguishers. I went to see if the cat was trapped there, but there wasn't a cat there. Every two to three days, I heard the sound of what I thought to be something being dragged. The sound came from above, and at first I thought that it could be the noise of the residents on one of the upper floors. You know, regular, normal, everyday noises. But then I realized that it was coming from the ceiling. Whenever I got off the elevator on my floor, I got the strong feeling that I was being stared at. I always looked around, but there was never anyone there. One morning I opened my eyes and naturally looked out towards the balcony. I saw a man in a suit stood on my balcony through the gap in the curtains. I went over and opened the curtains to see for myself, and there was no one there. I went out to the balcony to look around and I saw a pair of shoes that I didn't recognize. I looked down to see if the man I saw jumped, or something like that. And when I looked back, the shoes were gone. At that time, I put it down to it being early morning and my tiredness, but it wasn't the only experience I had. Day or night, I would hear the sound of high heels walking around my door. When I would come home, I would smell the strong scent of a woman's perfume, and sometimes there would be water in the bath or the sink. Sometimes I would hear the sound of a woman laughing out loud in the hallway on my floor, it wasn't a normal sounding laugh, it was a maddening sort of laugh. It sounded like it was coming from the stairs by the elevator. On the weekend at around 3am, if I was awake, I heard the occasional sound of footsteps approaching my door and then leaving. They sounded squelchy and strange. When I was on the phone in the apartment, I would have technical difficulties, crosstalk. I even heard the sound of moaning whilst I was on the phone. All of these things I experienced in the first week, so naturally I was really annoyed with the realtor for putting me in this place. Oh, I'm really sorry you're experiencing these terrible things. I'm sure as long as you don't come out late at night, you'll be safe. P 
please hang on in there for a little while longer whilst I find another apartment for you. I didn't like how non-committal he was being, but I didn't have too many other options. Despite all these weird and kind of annoying things going on, I didn't feel as if I was in any real danger. I figured I could just put up with it for another couple of weeks. I would describe myself as a pretty optimistic person, so I didn't feel particularly worried or concerned. However, there were two incidents which terrified me that came in the following week. It happened when I went to the bathroom late at night. I saw an old woman sat in front of my front door, inside my apartment. I was certain that I had locked that door. I was incredibly freaked out by this strange old woman in my place, and all I could muster was a frightened, um. She replied quick as a flash, I'm waiting for the old man. He's here, isn't he? That's all she said. She just sat there grinning. Even when I said there was no old man who lives here, she just sat there looking at me, smiling. She said that she would wait right there until he comes back. Naturally, I called the cops and I waited for them to arrive. I kept my eyes on the old woman. She didn't move a muscle. When the cops arrived, they escorted the old woman away, and I thought that that would be the end of it. But the second she was outside of my apartment and the front door closed, I heard a hell of a commotion roused from the hallway. The old woman screamed in a terribly shrill voice. She kept saying, give me back the old man, again and again. She blasted her hands and feet against my door. I watched through the peephole as the officers dragged her away. And I cannot forget that look on that old lady's face. It's burned into my memories. The other experience which really creeped me out happened when my lousy realtor contacted me to let me know that he had finally found a new place for me to live. It was great news, of course. It was a Sunday and I didn't have any classes, so I started packing right away. I stopped my packing when I heard a weird, rustling sound coming from outside my door. I was so tired of all these strange things going on, I just walked over to the door and threw it open. I saw a cardboard box sat on my welcome mat. I'm a pretty suspicious and curious person by nature, so I grabbed it and took it inside. I opened it, and all that was inside was a dirty looking wooden doll. I picked it up, I turned the doll over in my hands, and I noticed that on the back of the doll was a message, written in pen. It read, the doll will make you happy. Yeah, that creeped me out. So I dropped the doll back in the box and put it outside again. Not right in front of my door this time, but just off to the side. Seeing that doll gave me all the motivation I needed to speed up my packing. I went back to filling up boxes. A few moments go by, and while I'm busy boxing things up again, I heard a rustling again at the door. Once again, I raced over and threw the door open. The cardboard box was back, and now there was a piece of paper resting on top of the box. There was writing on that paper, and it read, Are you happy now? I ran to the stairs, looked if the elevator had been called to any floors, and listened out to any movement, but there was no sign of anyone in the area. I just didn't care anymore. I went back to packing. My time in this place was almost over, and I couldn't have done much else than pack. I just needed to be ready to move out, and standing around, feeling creeped out, wouldn't help me get out of there any faster. But then, I heard a knock at my door. I tried to ignore it at first, but the knocking at the door was persistent. I went over to the door again. I was completely enraged at this point. I was going to shout at whoever was out there. As soon as my hand touched the doorknob, something told me to stop. I cannot put this feeling into words. It was as if there was some sort of force preventing me from opening that door. My body involuntarily buzzed I don't know a better word to explain it, maybe rippled like a lake, shook like a tree. Like I said, I'm a curious guy, so my next dumbass move was to put my eye to the peephole and look out to the hall. I was scared, but the fear of not knowing was stronger. When I looked through the peephole, I saw a woman in her twenties stood there. She looked very thin. She was frighteningly thin, actually. 
Both of her hands were wrapped with bandages. I was in stunned silence, and when I came to my senses I realized that being silent was probably for the best. I watched her. Her eyes seemed reddened. I couldn't look away. She seemed to sense my presence. She drew her face closer to my door and then asked, You've become happy now, haven't you? I staggered back from the door. All I could hear was her asking that same question. You've become happy now, haven't you? I don't know how long she kept it up, but it felt like ages. As soon as I heard her voice stop asking, I waited an hour, and then I approached the peephole again. The box was gone, and the woman was gone. Two days after this incident, I was finally able to move out, and into what I like to call a proper place. I told my realtor about these incidents, and I asked him if he knew anything about it. He was quite diplomatic, and he said he didn't know the full history and detail of what happened in that apartment, or indeed on that floor. He did say, though, that people have complained about similar sorts of issues in the past, and they seem to occur every two years or so. There were no rumors of suicide or murder. He said that there was no catalyst, but within the space of a few months, everyone on that floor moved out, and as soon as he moved some new people in there, they were asking to leave. He stopped offering the apartments on that floor, temporarily I guess, because I was offered a room on that floor. He said that in only urgent and unavoidable scenarios would someone be put on that floor, or when he makes a mistake and he double books out an apartment. He said that all the apartments on that floor weren't currently being advertised. By the way, the reason I was warned against going out at night was because the previous person who lived in that apartment said that she was chased by something and she took a tumble down the stone stairs. She did herself a terrible injury. He said that when she explained what had happened to her, she was barely comprehensive. He couldn't understand what she was trying to explain. Well, that's the end of my experiences and my stories. I moved into a nice new place, and I lived there peacefully. Since the realtor caused me a lot of trouble, and kind of put me in danger, I got a sweet reduction in rent, which helped all the way to graduation day. Hey, like I told you about three or four times, I'm a curious guy. Two years ago I went to see that apartment block. I was in the area, so I thought, why not? The building had been demolished, and it's now a parking lot. This is a cool little ghost story I heard at high school that I wanted to share here. So hopefully you like it. I'm not sure if it's from the Meiji period, which is an era in Japan from 1868 to 1912, or if it's from the Taisho period, which is from 1912 to 1926. Either way, it's a pretty scary story. There was a man named Nobumatsu. He worked as an apprentice in a big workshop. He was a good man, he loved his wife and he worked hard. He decided to book some time off work as a national holiday was approaching. He wanted to go back to his hometown to visit his family for the Obon festival. He was really pleased that he was given this time off work, so he thanked his boss and he thanked his wife for letting him go by himself to visit his family home. Then later that night, something happened. Nobumatsu's wife was sleeping in her bed after a hard day of work. She suddenly woke up. It was the dead of night and a terrible premonition came to her. She felt terribly uneasy and worried. She sat up and naturally stared ahead of her towards the sliding paper shoji door. She was fixated on it for some reason. Before her eyes, she saw the sliding paper door open slowly. A dark figure slowly entered the room. It was this black humanoid shadow. It seemed to float and flow through the room. She was frozen in horror as it then stopped by the side of her bed. Nobumatsu is dead, it said to her. The voice was described as low and unearthly. Then it left the way it came in without making another sound. She was too terrified to sleep and worried for her husband. 
she was left alone awake and concerned by the nightly visitor. Roughly every two hours after first contact, that black shadow returned to her to recant its chilling message. Nobumatsu is dead. She was so concerned for her husband that when dawn came, she hired a messenger to urgently go to his hometown. Nobumatsu's family had already informed the police that their son hadn't come home from the night before. Then a search was conducted. The woods were raked and the coast and beaches were being searched. The search ended with the unfortunate discovery of Nobumatsu's body. He was found below a cliff face. What do you think that black shadow was? A messenger? A perpetrator? Either way, I think it's pretty creepy. This happened when I lived in Hachioji. I was in university at the time. I moved to Tokyo from Chiba. I lived in three different places when I moved to Tokyo. This experience takes place in the second apartment I moved into. I found an apartment I liked. The building was pretty old, but it had just been renovated. The structure and layout of the apartment was really unique, so as soon as I viewed it, I expressed my interest to the realtor and then contracted it. I had a girlfriend, and she moved in with me. Let me just explain the layout of that apartment. It was on the second floor of the building, and in the corner. It was strange and cool because I had my own personal staircase. It was connected to my apartment, through the parking lot. There was also a parking spot just below this private staircase, which made life easy. If you open the front door, you will see the toilet on your right, and the kitchen just down the hall behind it on the right. There are stairs on the left, and an entrance to the living room next to them. If you head up the stairs, you'll find a door leading to the attic. I really liked that attic. So like I said, the floor plan was pretty unusual, but cool. However, shortly after moving in, the weird goings-on began. My girlfriend loved the place as much as I did. One day we were sat in the lounge drinking booze, watching some TV. We then both heard the sound of the door handle. My girlfriend instantly went into panic mode. She was super freaked out. I tried to laugh it off, and I said something like, Chill out, it's probably just the wind. I would be lying if I said that my heart wasn't beating as fast as it possibly could in my chest. I was just trying to stay calm and composed. It definitely sounded like the door. A couple of seconds later, the sound came again. This time, she really started to panic. She was close to tears. And what kind of man or boyfriend would I be if I didn't go and check it out? So I told her to wait there. And I went to see where the noise was coming from. I was breaking it. It was really stressful. I came out of the lounge and faced the front door and I saw something. I saw what was causing the noise. Before my eyes, the front door handle moved up and down like if there was someone outside trying to gain entrance. Panic had settled in for me now. The door handle rattled, and the door moved. It sounded like there was some real force behind it. I realized that the door wasn't locked. And as that thought came to me, the door flew open. I expected to see some masked, knife-wielding maniac, but there was no one out there. That particular fear slowly fizzled away, and I called out to my girlfriend. Oh hey, don't worry, I think it was just some garbage blown by the wind outside making the noise. I lied to her in an attempt to reassure her. Despite no one being behind that door, I still felt scared. The things which are unseen are the most frightening. The things which defy logic and reason are the most frightening. I decided to try and forget about it and carry on. Stuff it down with brown. I'm not that good at drinking though. Is that the right way to phrase it? I'm kind of weak. I get drunk easily and I always end up feeling sick. That day was really strange though. I didn't drink much and I began to almost 
hyperventilate, like my breathing got really fast. I felt hazy and dull, as if I was looking through a yellow filter. Everything had this yellowish tinge to it. Something was definitely wrong. I felt as if I would either faint or die. No, I'm not being melodramatic. Things really escalated. So I sat there panicking silently and internally until I could bear it no longer. I turned to my girlfriend and asked through labored breath for her to call an ambulance. She called and the ambulance arrived and I was taken to the hospital. While in hospital, I was informed that I had suffered with hyperventilation, which they assumed was likely brought on by some sort of stressor. He said that my symptoms had already begun to subside. As you know, I was just at home sitting around drinking, so how the hell did I suddenly start to stress myself out? I didn't feel stressed out, and I wasn't hyperventilating anymore, so I just asked to leave. We called a taxi to take us home. Well, I was pretty concerned, as that hadn't ever happened to me before, so I called my mum, told her about everything, and asked for her opinion. I'll digress just for a second here and tell you about my mum. She has always believed that she has had the power to sense the presence of spirits. I mean, I don't think I have such ability. I'm half dumb. I didn't expect her to say what she said. But that sounds like the early symptoms of possession. You need to be really careful. That really creeped me out. The hyperventilation turned out to be a regular thing. I learned how to manage it a bit better with each bout, but I decided that I didn't want to live in that apartment anymore. Something was terribly wrong there. I tried to get out as soon as possible. My girlfriend was in agreement. She wanted to leave too. She could see that something was affecting me. I tried to stay out of that apartment as much as I could. As soon as my classes finished, I would try and find other things to do to keep me busy. I would go play the slots now and then. I wasn't ever interested in the slots before, and I don't play them anymore. It was a strange, short-lived hobby. After that, I would go pick up my girlfriend from her office job and then head home. About a month went by from the incident with the door. Then one evening, we came back to the apartment. Like I said before, there was a spot right by the stairs, which I always liked to park in. However, when we got back there, there was a bunch of people in the car park. I noticed that one of them was a monk, and all the others were wearing mourning attire. There were bouquets of flower, and lit incense sticks. It was a pretty strange sight to see. My girlfriend and I felt a little panicked. We parked away from them in a different spot, and I headed over to ask them what the hell was going on. The monk then smiled at me and said, Oh, don't worry. Things are going to be fine now. Please, don't worry. I didn't understand. I asked him to explain exactly what he meant, and then a woman in her fifties stepped forward. I think I can explain. My husband ended things here. I'm sorry. My mouth hung open. Apparently, he took his own life in our apartment only a few days before we moved in. I was stunned, but I asked, Why are you doing this now, then? The monk then said that there was a shared belief that the woman's husband hadn't passed over, but now, with the help of the mourners here today and the ritual he had performed, he believed that the man's spirit was now at peace. I wasn't certain that I could trust if the spirit of that man was truly at peace. What I felt in those bouts of hyperventilation was incredibly profound levels of fear, the like of which I didn't want to experience again. So despite the reassurances of the monk, I complained to the landlord and moved out. I'm happy to say that the hyperventilation episodes have stopped, and my girlfriend and I live a much more comfortable life. Noble Matsu is dead. <laughs>